G'day, I'm Jim Thompson. Today we're extending this fence downwards and installing a floodgate across a creek. The idea of the floodgate is to prevent cattle from walking up the creek when it's dry and to allow debris to wash down without destroying our fence when it's wet. We're going to be using two end assemblies, one at each side, to suspend the floodgate off and we're going to be using some great gear to make the floodgate and it's an interesting design. And don't forget, if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and there's plenty more content like this and more on timthompson.ag. <laughs> so Daniel, what's the plan here today, mate? You, you're going away from solid barriers across the creek that some people put in place to something that's flexible and will stay in place. We've had a look at a couple of designs and we've had a bit of experience with this yep. on a few other farms. Yep. And I think the design we've come up to with is perfect for this yep. job. Yep. And it will flow with the water and then return. It won't collect debris as such. So a, a hard barrier collects debris. Yeah, there's a lot of people will hang corrugated iron or bits of netting or whatever. Yep and we've got pretty eroded banks up here. Yes. Log comes through, grabs it, yep. half a k downstream, you've Correct. got to untangle it, bring it back, stick it together. No, we shouldn't have to come here and just, we just have to check it, yep. and that's all, or maybe we push the dangling wires back into a line, Yep. but hopefully most of the debris will go down the creek without yes. any fuss. Yep. Um, but we are electrifying it to stop stock and vermin transiting between the two farms. And for that, you're using a cute little 0.2 joule Gallagher solar powered electric fence energizer. Yes, we are. Yep. And you're using it just on this section. Yeah, just in this section, so that if this section goes out, yep. it doesn't affect the rest of the farm. And all our livestock work is all electrified around this farm. Yes. So we don't want to knock out the whole farm. We only yeah, want to. Yeah. If it affects this little section, it doesn't matter. By the next day, we can come out and fix it. And this little unit's quite cheap, but it's not cheap and nasty. It's good quality and it should last. We, we want the quality and we want the warranty. Yeah, yeah. And realistically, we haven't got time to come and check everything every day yeah. and make sure it's working. I can see by a flashing light it's working from a distance. Yes. And it's done. Now, the end assemblies are going to be fence stay end assemblies. Yes, that HD. Are taking care of this breakaway. HD heavy duty fence assemblies. And we're coming in right past here yep. where we're standing on the levels. Yep. We're well, even, um, so we don't have any further erosion, and we're keeping protection of the, the, the assemblies itself so they yep. don't get involved in the, the flooding. And you found that these end assemblies work quite well in flood conditions? Fantastic. Fantastic. You've, you've, we've you've got, we've got, we've got, we've got about four kilometres in at, at uh, Akron at the moment, yep. and it's been affected by the flooding. Yep. Uh, we haven't lost any fencing at all. It hasn't come apart. The wire's held on, and the assemblies are holding. Well, that's, that's good to know because not all assemblies hold in floods. Unfortunately not. Now we're also going to be using high tensile wire across here, some, yes. some Murray high tensile wire. Yeah, thank you very much to Murray fencing. But yep. uh, yeah, we're using some high tensile, have a current and we've got to stretch the strength of the wire yes. to hold us in position. And we're going to use some medium tensile wire as the down Correct. droppers. Correct, yes. So because it's electric. just to make it easier to tie off. Exactly. And it'll probably hang a bit better as yeah, well. Yeah, we're going to have a bit of a discussion about tying them off. We, you and I. We'll All have right, to, fantastic. We'll, we'll sort that out at the end. Well, we'll, we'll play and we'll experiment. What do you yes, reckon? we do. I like nothing yes. better. Yeah. Well, let's get into it, mate. Thanks for having us along. Thank you. Appreciate it. set up the two end assemblies yes. and you've run out your high tensile wire you've got yes. chain strainers on both ends at the moment yes. you're keeping your options open yes definitely and to so we can get the marking right for the wire droppers yep because we've just been thinking about this a little bit so we yep. don't want to create a wind chime effect in the valley oh, and we, we don't, don't want to we don't want a water horn when the water's flowing yes. so yeah and we're using using these heavy duty off cuts sort of gal steel pipe yep Yep. So they may make a bit of noise. So what we're trying to do is so space, them, space them like away from one another. Yes. They're going to get interrupted in water flow anyway. You can't control that. But the yep. weight and hanging from the wire, they shouldn't cling together, hopefully. So we're going to put them Not about six, anyway. six inches apart, 150 yeah. mil. Okay. And that should hopefully help us get through. And we won't have many things go through that because they'll be electric yep. through the fence. So hopefully that should be fine. So this will even stop a wombat at six inches. Yes, yeah. and it's only going to be about four inches off the ground. Yep. Depending on where we are, because we, remember we've got a bit of a ground slope here. 
So we're gonna just have to work it as, as we go. We'll yep. do the top knots all first, yep. like a long liner, and then drop them down, cut them off, tie them on, done. Sounds like a plan. Hopefully. Let's get into it. Yep. The process of constructing the droppers on this floodgate was actually really, really simple. We cut spaces out of old irrigation pipe, then loosened off the high tensile wire that we used to set our stock posts in place, and threaded all of the spaces onto the wire at the far end. We then pulled the medium tensile wire over to the other side of the creek in a triangle so it didn't get in the way, and then we tied off the medium tensile wire into several metre sections between each of the spaces. So we're looking a little bit messy at the moment. We've only half completed the job. We've got end knots to finish off. We left them loose so that they could be slid across the high tensile wire that's supporting this floodgate. And then we've got our spaces in place and our medium tensile just loosely held in place where we want it to fall. The next step, of course, is putting our large galvanized pipe onto the end of each one of these droppers to hold them nice and straight. And we're using medium tensile wire so that they'll fall nicely and also the wire was really easy to work with to get it across the creek. The right wire for the right job is not always high tensile and that's why manufacturers still make medium tensile and soft wire. So your next fencing project might actually be a combination of wires if you choose the right wire for the right job. Well job's done mate. Finally. Fence is up and, up and running. Yes. You've got your Gallagher unit on there that's going to charge over, over the next day or so and get switched on. And all of this is going to be a net of joy, isn't it? Well, we'll see if you can hear this. Yeah, that's getting annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but the good thing is it's been blowing a bit of a gale here today. And as you can see even now, when they're swinging around, a good six inch distance between them, they don't hit each other very often. Yep. Um, so it's not going to annoy the neighbours too much. No, not really. It's going to let debris, like on, I'm pretty debris-ish. It's going to let debris through the fence pretty easily, not get caught up on stuff, and it's going to prevent cattle from ever wanting to go through there once they touch the hose. Hopefully, hotel. yes, it will prevent the cattle from going anywhere near here, but remember we'll be in the exclusion area as well, so hopefully yep. that'll stop everything from going anywhere near this waterway or crossing the waterway. So learnings from this were that the uh, pipes that we were using were perhaps a little bit too long. And a bit too heavy, a because too this heavy. sag, as you can see, is a little bit of a sag. We had it yep. straight, and we had no wire on it, no, no weight on it. Yep. And as soon as we put the weight on, we started Just to sit. Just to ease in a and bit. And the fence stays haven't moved. Yep. We've checked them three times already. Yep. They haven't moved, it's actually the wire and its core it's strength is starting to stretch. Yep. And that's all it is. Yep. So learnings from this is go heavy gauge wire, high tensile. Yes, definitely. Use slightly shorter pipes definitely and don't tie your pipes off until you're finished because Correct. as the fence settles the first ones you tie off as we found ground, yeah. ended up on the ground, ground so yeah. just do a loose kink in each one that's until it. you're happy yep. then tie them all off at the end correct that's the only way to do it if you need some fantastic advice or contracting work contact daniel from sig ag services, ag services yep, is it, it. Yep. daniel from sig ag services He's in the central Victoria area, but he does travel. He's a very smart man, and he's into grass-fed MSA beef in a big way. Daniel, thank you very much, thank mate. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate your Appreciate time. It. Thank you. And all of your skills. Thank you. Guys, if you like this kind of video, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more content like this and more on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.